Okay, hello everyone and thank you for joining our online seminar. Just gonna introduce it. It's about how to inspire learners with digital culture with with our expert Milena from Europeana. And here's some instructions for the participants on the top bar. You see this um, little man. If you click there, you see all these different options. Raise your hand, agree, disagree. Unfortunately, we're not able to give you a microphone for technical reasons, but you can um, raise your hand or agree or disagree, or tell us speak louder or softer, speed up or slow down there, from there. And this uh, meeting is recorded. That will be available after the event. And if you have any problems with the sounds, we recommend that you use the headsets and connect your speakers and microphone from the top bar so that all the icons should be green. And here's our expert, Milena Popova, who is a business development manager at Europeana. And she's the head of the reuser services team. And she's responsible for the development of partnerships with educational networks, publishers, policymakers, and nat uh, national ministries of education. And she over also oversees the development of Europeana education community. Some more information about her. And after the event, I will upload the slides in the event page that you can access this. And if you have any questions, could you please type it in the chat box? I'll collect them and uh, during the seminar, we can, uh, Milena can answer them. I'll just, uh, oops, a second. And just a second, I'll put your slides. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes, okay, so in, okay, and uh, many thanks for doing this seminar and uh, kind of stuff. Sure, um, I'm very excited uh, to be, well, to have my first uh, webinar on a greening network. Uh, thanks very much to all of you for joining today, and I hope that uh, this session will be very useful to you. So, what we'll do today is that I'll tell you a bit more what Europeana is, what we do in education, what resources and support we offer to you as a teacher, and I'll also give some inspiring examples of educational material with our content. I have some organizational notes. Uh, I will switch off my camera right now so that you can really focus on the presentation and uh, uh, the content I have to share. Uh, I'll also make, uh, in the middle of my presentation, a short break after a practical example so that I can address some of the questions. Um, and then at the end of the presentation, once again, uh, I'll be answering any open questions. Hope that's okay. So now I'll dive into my presentation. Stopping my camera. Okay. So what is Europeana? Um, if Europeana is Europe's platform for digital cultural heritage. It's funded and founded by the European Commission. It all started around 10 years ago. Um, we launched the portal in 2008 with uh, almost 2 million digital records and now we grew exponentially and present more than 50 million digitized cultural items on Europeana.eu. This huge uh, database of items comes from over 3,700 libraries, museums, archives, and galleries across Europe. It represents content from 43 countries and in many languages. These are currently over 23 languages. Also, you can find a lot of uh, different media files. We have content uh, which is text, also images, uh, audio, video, 3D, and uh, this content covers a lot of themes from art and architecture to maps, geography, natural history, history, fashion, uh, and films. 
sorry, you can, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm addressing uh, currently a content, I mean, uh, a comment in the chat. I switched off my camera so that I can focus on the slides. Okay, and then also um, there's some comments that it's uh, there's a problem with the sound. For me, you sound very clear, so I don't know if it's with the participants or if there's a chance that you can um, speak louder. Okay, well, or... I will try to speak louder, um, although it's almost to the max of the, of okay. the sound. Is that better? Yeah, I can hear you very well, but there's some people who are not able to hear. The voice yes. is good. Okay, so it, it should be better now. Okay, Great. good. So yes. I'll continue. Um, yeah? <laughs> sure. Okay, so we have uh, Europeana as a portal, uh, as a platform to Europe's uh, cultural heritage um, with a lot of uh, different types of content coming from many countries and from cultural institutions across Europe. This is how the portal looks like. You can type your piano in you. Probably you'll see a different uh, main picture because we change it uh, often so that we can showcase different uh, pieces from our collection. And later we explore together how it really looks like in action. A bit more on Europeana markets and products. Uh, this very complicated diagram represents everything we do in a nutshell. So probably you can see in the middle of this uh, graphic, it's everything we do at our core. We aggregate content from various institutions. Then this content goes out to three main markets, the European citizens, the cultural heritage institution, this is our professional audience, and then the three markets in green, which are the so-called reuse markets, and these are research, education, and the creative industries. This is where um, I'm responsible for uh, developing different uh, partnerships and projects. And I should say that out of the three, education is our top priority market. Then the next cycle is what we do for all these uh, markets. And with regard to our markets, there is the reuse one, research, education, and creative industries. We do develop partnerships, we do build our communities, and we really promote the use of digital cultural sector by the respective users, being teachers and students, or researchers, or creative professionals. But today, I will focus naturally on education and what we do in education. So here is why we decided, why we do everything we do. Our goal is that digital cultural content is used in Europe's classroom by um, teachers like you, so that you can enrich digital learning material and your lessons with cultural data and inspire learners of all ages. This mission is even more important in 2018 because, as you might know, this year is the European Year of Cultural Heritage and Europeana is the digital face of the year. So this year we focus not only on the monuments you see uh, outside, so the physical, the tangible cultural heritage, but also on digital and how we can make people discover this cultural heritage and use it in their every, everyday activities. So who do we work with? First, the first group of partners we work with are institutional partners. So these are like ministries of uh, education mainly. Um, we have already started a pilot with the French Ministry of Education. We are working with Italy, uh, with Finland, and some other ministries. The second group of uh, partners is uh, educa our educational association and networks. And you surely recognize the logo of it winning, being one of our key partners. But we also work with European Schoolnet and EuroCleo, the European Association of History Educators. And finally, we also work with commercial partners, which are mainly developers of educational content, like educational publishers, or developers of um, educational software or apps. Here 
I'll give some example, the Art Stories, which is an Italian startup, and I'll tell you more about it in the next slide. Elliot Demi, an online uh, educational platform in Finland, and the Naval School, which is a French uh, primary, uh, primary school learning platform. Oh, this slide uh, doesn't look uh, great, I see. I'm not sure what's, uh, what went wrong. Um, these are the resources oh, we offer for education. Yeah. Okay, let me just uh, have a have a look. You can uh, continue and I'll um, have a look what's wrong here. Yes, okay, so we have uh, four types of resources for education. On your upper left, you see the Europeana collections. This is the main website, europeana.eu, uh, and I'll walk you through all the resources there in a minute. But basically, you can uh, browse for yourself all these over 50 million records, filter them um, using the different options we have by media, uh, by language, etc., and explore for yourself. But you can also uh, browse our curated content, which are thematic collections, also virtual exhibition and galleries. The second type of resources are more on the technical side. So we provide the tools to access and use our content. So, for example, you can manually download uh, the images you found relevant for your lessons. Or if you're more technical savvy, you can um, look at our five free APIs, APIs standing for Application Program Interface, which allow you to retrieve your piano content and present it in various educational environments, being an online educational service or platform or app um, or a similar environment. And finally, yeah. Yeah, just a, just a second. I'll stop just sharing the files. I'll put the correct one over there. Just wanted to give you the heads up. Uh... Okay, you're just do that. Yes, just a just a second. Let's put the correct one so people can see it. Apologies for the this one. It can happen. Okay. Should be there any minute now. So. Sorry, everyone, for the Okay, so I can browse the now delay, I'll just put the, with the, the fixed slides. There we go. Yeah. Okay, you can continue mm -hmm. from the... Well, maybe... Yes. <laughs> so there will be a short record? No, I think this slide doesn't uh, display correctly. Uh, well, I will just explain. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I think, yeah, it didn't display correctly. I have the correct version, so. Well, I will explain. Yeah, I will, after the event, I will put the, uh, the slides that are correctly displayed. In a second, so you so can, can see, but listen sorry to me right now, and then we'll look at the resources in a bit more detail. Um, so to wrap up, we have the European collection. So this is uh, um, all the collection, all the cultural heritage materials available on Europeana.eu. And there we also have curated content, thematic collection, virtual exhibition, and galleries. We also offer the free tools to access and use this content. So you can either manually download the item or if you're more technically savvy, use our free uh, five APIs. 
Uh, we also created a special online guide for educators where we present briefly how you can use our content, including how you, can, you should uh, credit the content or pointing to any other opportunities and limitations. We also, um, I'll also tell you about the resources developed with partners, and these are online platforms, games and applications, as well collaborative tools. And finally, I'll tell you a bit more about the European community and uh, how you can find all the, these materials for educators. We developed a special dedicated online space on our professional website. It's called European of Professionals. And we also have an open LinkedIn group called European for Education, where I really invite you to join. So moving to the next slide, where I'll tell you more about the European collection. And here is our practical example. So I'll share my screen right now so that we can do it together. So this is how European EU looks like right now. As mentioned, we are changing the main image uh, very often. So this is our current main image. I'll make the resolution a bit so that you can see it more. So here in the very center of the website, you can type a keyword and explore for yourself uh, all the results you can find. So you can browse all these over 50 million artworks, artifacts, books, videos, etc and be on your own discovery tour. As mentioned, we also feature curated content. So you can either look down on, on, the, uh, in, on the bottom of your screen to see the different future thematic collections, or go to the bottom, uh, oh, sorry, to the, <laughs> uh, to the uh, navigation menu um, above and see uh, the different options. So, we offer thematic collections, which are really, as the name suggests, uh, curated data sets on a particular theme. Right now, we feature thematic collection on the first look for art, fashion, maps, geography, migration, music, natural history, photography, and sport. And we are constantly adding more to this uh, uh, collection. Just to briefly show, if you go to the first look for content, this is how it looks like. This is a template for every thematic collection. So you have a really thematic main image, the number of items you can explore over here. So these are more than 500,000 items from across Europe. You have some quick links to uh, curated mini collections. In this case, uh, collections to women in First World War, letters, uh, Eastern Front collection, postcards, etc. And then you have featured resources, which are usually virtual exhibitions or different stories or galleries. And this applies to all the collection. I'll show you the art collection, just for example. Um, so again, the quick links to different artists and highlights, galleries and exhibitions. And final example will be fashion, because it's uh, a bit different. It contains also some curated um, some extra filters. So you have on your left not only the collections per designer, but also per technique. So if you're uh, dealing with such a subject, you can really find very relevant historical fashion content. So these are our collections. Then you can also, on the second tab, explore using different filters. So you can go filter by colors, and you can select your favorite color and find content using that color or you can go by sources. These are the different institutions um, providing content to European story. If you're particularly interested in content from a institution in Europe, you just go there and find the content from uh, these institutions. The other options are topic, people, time period. A very useful feature we find are the galleries. Um, these are really mini curated collections. I will go there now to present it. So very visual materials. Usually they're around 
yeah, 15, 20 images in one gallery, and they again focus on a particular topic. You have a lot of content here. I mean, from art and natural history to maps, um, natural history, architecture and art, and we are constantly adding material. So if you click on a particular collection, let's go to art and natural history, for instance, you have all these selected images, plus a very short introduction um, in the beginning. So this is about the galleries. Then we go to virtual exhibitions, which are um, a really useful combination of more expansive narrative and uh, selected visuals. We'll go to all exhibitions. And again, you can see different topics covered from music and photography to art and fashion. One of my favorite exhibitions is really Art Nouveau, so I'll jump into it. This is how it looks like. So we have a main image with an explanation of what the virtual exhibition is about. It's a really a story about a historical period um, and, uh, or a particular art movement in, in this case. What's unique about this exhibition is that because of the breadth and scope of the movement, you can dive into different subtopics. You can explore Art Nouveau in mastercrafts or in prints or in architecture um, or in interior. I really recommend for you to explore all this collection. There are really unique uh, things to find here. Or if you look for history, there is one more thing to explore. On the, yeah, this is an exhibition on the First World War, and it has really a unique images, as you can see, seven legs, uh, seven men, one leg. It's really touching and it provides uh, very interesting content. So this is in short the European collection, but I want to play with you, together with you, um, play out one example. So let's take um, the topic of Art Nouveau. I'll play one example, which is more visual, and then I'll continue with one more historical example. So I'll go for Art Nouveau, so just click, and then I'll get the results. So as you can he see here, we have over 80,000 um, 80, results. You can select how you see your results. So here on your right, you can select the grid, which is the current display of the topic, or you can uh, uh, select uh, the list option where you see the results in a list format. It's whatever works for you. I'll prefer the grid one, so I'll switch back to the more visual results. Then on your left, you see all the available filters to refine your search. Here you can decide, oh, okay, this is an art topic, so I want to see, really dive into the art of art Nouveau. So you select this collection and you narrow down the results. Then you can decide, oh, I want only images from this collection or images and videos. So you click the media filter for images and here you have even further options because you can decide whether you want only the colorful images or black white images or a specific color, what uh, type of format they Hello, I think think. we lost Milena for a moment. Are you still here Hello? with us? Yeah, I mean, do you hear me? Hello? Oh, yes. Okay, yes, sorry. It's just, um, hello, yes. Okay, all good. It's just a disconnector for me. Okay, so what was the last you heard? Because then. Uh... Sure. Okay. I think it was just only for me because now it's okay. So you can continue. Okay. Apologies for that. I thought you, uh, you had problems. So I think it was me. Okay, great. So while well, we're looking at the images and the different uh, options with the images, so you can select the orientation, portrayal, landscape. You can also select the size of the image. If you want only large images for your lesson, then you can find this and explore, or even the format, the JPEG, PDF, or PNG. Then a really important filter uh, is only items with links to media. I really recommend to use this filter when you do your own search and I explain why. So when we click on a European item, it, the item card looks like this. So you have um, the image, which you can decide to zoom out or zoom in. 
Depending on the license, you can also download the image by using this button on your right in, in blue. On your right, you can see more about the institution the image is coming from and whether you can use it. So this is really the license information. Um, in this case, it allows limited reuse and the license this image is available is Creative Commons uh, by non -com for non-commercial reuse. But I'll explain a bit more about it. What is important is that this image, it's available for immediate download. So when you click this filter, I'll go back for more clarity. So when you click the filter only items with links to media, this means that you get only items which you can download from the website. Because there are some images for which you have to go to the institutional website to download the, um, uh, the full image. The number of images with uh, well, this extra step are not that many. But for your convenience, I really recommend to use the only items with links to media. Then the really important um, filter is can I use it? This is really uh, related to copyright. Um, as you can see, we have three options here. Free to reuse, summarizes or present all the um, material which is available uh, in public domain or under the open Creative Commons licenses. So once you click this filter, you can be sure that the the results you get can be used in uh, in your lessons or in different materials. Then limited reuse. Here you have some options. Sometimes you can use it, but with restrictions. And no use. It really um, it really displays items which are mainly for inspiration. So let's select the free use so that we can get only the results which you can use. Okay. And then to finalize the filter very briefly, I mean, you can select the uh, content from a specific country or uh, content from in a specific language. I mean, you can click more and see all the language available. And, uh, quite many. Uh, aggregated, this is more technical terms. These are the institutions in a particular country which aggregate the content from the local museums. For, for instance, for Italy, this is Cultura Italia. This is the national aggregator which collects um, materials from all the national institutions. And then if you're interested in a particular institution, you can uh, check this box as well. So to go back to um, one of the results, let's take a look at this nice pattern. All right. So as mentioned before, you have the image, you have the download options. And when you click the down options, you also get the attribution because this item is available on the Creative Commons uh, by share alike. So you have to attribute the author, but you can just copy and paste this, uh, this image. Then you get information about the rights and the institutions uh, which the item is coming from. So in this case, from the National Museum in Sweden, you can use it. This, again, I emphasize this, uh, this information, it's key to use. You get the title of the item, a description, which you can use for your own story. Uh, you have a bit more detailed metadata about the people, the properties and times, but I guess this is not too relevant for, uh, for an immediate lesson. And finally, at the, bo the bottom, you have similar items, so you can continue exploring and find other relevant material. So this is how your piano looks like. Um, so I'd like to go back to my presentation. It's loading. Yeah, so before moving back, this is the first break 
Um, I guess it's a lot of information at this stage, so I'm happy to answer any questions which relate to our collections and how we search con the content. Hello? Hello? Yes? Um, yeah, I'm just ready to address any questions on the collection, if there are. Yes, does anyone have any questions? There was one earlier. Uh, will you make more languages available for the Urbana portal? There are currently 22 languages, so I think we cover most of the European language and some uh, language even outside Europe. So for sure, maybe in the future when we expand uh, to Asia, <laughs> uh, we're happy to, <laughs> to have uh, more languages. But I think we are quite well represented uh, in terms of European content. Yeah, so the users can switch the language in the little button yes. at the top. Uh, maybe, yes. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But can we use Erebiana freely without the problem of copyright? <laughs> well, we have to respect copyright. Um, yeah, we want uh, one of the um, value of the Europeana is that uh, our content displays uh, the copyright status. So you know for sure that this con where this content is coming from and whether uh, you can use it. Uh, actually, I'll share one more thing. Um, because this is really relevant, so I'll share my screen to show something else. So, control is not. So, one very important thing about rights, uh, because this is when you go, when you have the item card and you're not sure, you see that you can use it, but you want to be 100% sure how you can use it, you can click on uh, the license, CC by SA, and then you go to the explanation, what it means and how you can use it. So we are very respectful of these licenses and we really encourage people to respect them too. I think this is one of the unique points about European. When you come here, you know what content to expect and how to use it. I hope that answered the question. Yes, so um, it is advised to check the copyright in the from oh, the well. website each time you want to share something. Yes, and then here's uh, one more question. How can I use Europeana with my children? Uh, maybe I need a bit more clarification on this question. Um, how exactly? And Miriam, can you elaborate? Yes, nothing is being shared at the moment, but I'll put it. Sure, I can address right this question uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, maybe the examples yes. uh, I'll share uh, will answer the question, um, but I'm happy to, to come back um, on this. Yes, yes, we can do that. And um, if you want to continue, if anyone has any other questions, just type it in the box. I'll collect them and uh, we can go over them at the end or whenever you, really? if you want to have another yeah. break. Sounds good? Sure. Yeah, okay. I'll continue then with the, the European tool, uh, tools. Uh, so these are the tools to access and use our content. So as I already shown, I mean, you can, I yeah, the slide doesn't uh, show correctly again, but uh, I'll explain. So you can download manually, I mean, as I just shown in the example. You can also uh, find out information about our free APIs, the application program interface. So if you're more technically um, savvy, you can design your own API query so that you get exactly the results from your piano which you want. For instance, I want um, uh, a book of images uh, related to the Art Nouveau from um, 1920s uh, from this particular country. I'm sure those of you who are more of a technical expert uh, understand perfectly what I mean. 
what's important to know here is that the API key, uh, that you need an API key to use the, our APIs. It's a free key. You need just to register on a simple form with your email address, you get the key and you can start immediately uh, designing your own API queries. We also offer extensive documentation and API support by the European API Google Group and we have a dedicated email API at europeana.eu. I move to the more exciting part, which is about the resources which we develop with partners. So these are like three types of um, resources. First are online platforms, and the example here is Historiana, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So Historiana is the online platform developed by, the, by Euroclio, the European Association of History Educators. Um, we worked with the Euroclio on featuring um, material from Europeana in curated sets, uh, which you can see on the left. So the one which is under the orange um, tab represents over 20 curated collections with European content on specific topics, from Stalin to Queen Victoria to Jeanne d'Arc. I really invite you to go uh, and check these collections. They are really nicely, very nicely curated. What we also did with Euroclio is that we developed together with Euroclio's um, contributing teachers e-learning activities, again, on specific topic, which use European content. Right now, there are over 20 e-learning activities, and I added a screenshot here. You can see it in, uh, with the blue tags. Um, they represent important moments in the British suffragette movement um, or other e-learning activities related to the First World War, for example. All the links uh, to these sources will be available afterwards, after my presentation, and will be sent to you. The other type of uh, examples of resources developed together with partners are apps and games. And this is a screenshot of the Art Stories Faces game which is a digital game for primary school children, which introduces them into visual art by showcasing selecting artworks from the piano collection. Um, this app was developed by the Italian startup Art Stories. Um, the, the startup was the winner of the European Challenges. So this is an online competition we organize for creative uh, startups. And they got uh, 10,000 euros for developing uh, the initial version of the app. The first version uh, had only five images from Europeana, and each image was associated to a certain assignment for children, really fun assignment. Um, in January this year, Art Stories released the second uh, version of the app, which features 30 images from Europeana, but also from the Metropolitan Museum in New York. I should say that this is already a very popular app because only in these three weeks since the release, the app has more than 30,000 downloads on the App Store. And I put the link in the uh, slide so that you can explore for yourself. What's also important is that uh, the app has been used in family villages of the Italian tour operator Alpitour on Fuerteventura. And in this way, it was it it reached over 4,000 4, children in summer 2017. So it's kind of a <laughs> proof up that it really has its audience and is quite widely used and quite popular. So I really encourage you to to check this up, especially if you're in primary education. My next example is the multi-touch book and ITSU course, which we developed in cooperation with Apple and the Belgian history educator Gwen Terhalven. So we probably know about the Apple Distinguished Educator Program uh, run by Apple. So we joined the, this program in 2015 and developed together this uh, multi-touch book on the topic of the First World War. This Ebook um, uses the European 1940-1980 collection and it's very interactive and multilingual. It's used in schools. I mean, you see here one image uh, from a school in Belgium, but it's also downloaded across the world. We have downloads from literally every continent in the world. 
it's free resource, so you can uh, go and explore for yourself and download in existing classes if that helps you. Ah, oh, yeah, the book is multilingual, so it's available in English and Dutch. Another good example of the book is Animals in the Great War, uh, Great War. So it's a free bilingual resource in Italian and English for secondary education teachers and students. It studies the First World War from the standpoint of the animals that took part in it using the European First World War thematic collection. It was developed by the Italian Cultural Association Associazione Culturale Se, and it's uh, available for free download. So you can see the link of, uh, at the bottom of the page. The next type of example are the more collaborative tools and the more fun tools, so to say, which you can use immediately in classroom. Um, together with digital libraries across the world, Europeana started the Geek It Up competition. This is a challenge looking for the best gifts created in public domain and open licensed material available on Europeana, uh, also in the Digital Library of America and Digital Library of New Zealand, for example. This competition usually runs in October every year and it aims to encourage all gift makers and cultural heritage enthusiasts to reuse and mix open content. It's a really fun competition. Um, you can see some examples uh, here about the gifts. And we also publish tutorials on how to create these gifts. So you can really use it as a nice and easy and fun exercise uh, in your classroom to explore cultural content on various topics. The next example is Van Gogh Yourself. The website is vangoyourself.com. You can check it for yourself. It's an online service. It's a free service um, where you can recreate artworks with your friends. So you can see some examples of famous paintings and next to them the recreations with real life people and real life environment. And it's again very, very much fun uh, and an easy way to discover cultural heritage content. Next example is the European Transcribathon. The European Transcribathon is a project developed by Europeana and uh, the German company Fact and Files to transcribe First World War documents to public crowdsourcing, meaning that we invite students uh, or teachers to uh, transcribe, I can't find a better word for that, uh, all documents into modern language and then to make these historical documents more accessible to the general public. We have uh, I put the link to uh, a European Transcribathon video so that you can look at for yourself how it works. Um, but basically, you can, it's an online service, transcribathon.com, with more than 1,000 registered users. And we also organize on-site events across Europe so that teachers and students get, get acquainted with the, the Transcribathons. So how it works is that um, students log in into the system, they see their old document and then transcribe it into the modern language. In this way, they can work together and improve not only their transcription and media capabilities, but also gain valuable teams, uh, teamwork skills. They are also able to compete with other schools uh, or even with other classes within the same school. So you have also this competition element, which is uh, uh, very nice, uh, very nice and encouraging. So we organized uh, 11 transcribathons and in 2018 there are more to come in Italy, France and Greece. More than 30,000 documents were collected and over 8,000 were completed. Uh, we have documents in French, in German and in English with more language to be added as well topics. So right now the documents are all around the First World War topic, but we will add more in the future. And just to show you how a transcribathon looks like. So these are pictures from the transcribathon workshop uh, in June 2016 in a uh, school in Berlin with the certificates issued to the students. Okay. And finally, um, I want to tell you a bit more how you can get in touch and find out more. So we created a dedicated space on your piano professional. And here I'll share my screen again because uh, we have problems with the flight, uh, flights. And I'll show you the professional's website.
it's from European EU. This is how it looks like. And we go to education. So here you can find featured resources on the top. What we do in education and quick links to all the resources we offer. This is the application gallery. Some really nice examples of what we did. Publications, who we work with, curated data sets. This is a list of curated um, uh, data sources on particular topics. For instance, 1960 in Norway, fashion objects, photographs, art pieces, nature sounds, etc. These are all openly licensed, so they are free to use. Technical information linked to the API, access to funding, and European Education Community, which is our community page. Again, with some latest news about events, etc. We also have, uh, as mentioned, the LinkedIn group. Um, it's called European Education. It's open for everyone uh, who wants to um, promote the use of cultural content for education and has some nice uh, examples to share. We can also address any questions you might have on, uh, in this group, as well on um, the dedicated email address reuse at european.eu. You can also drop a line to me, milana.pukova at european.eu, or you can join the conversation on Twitter by using the hashtag Europeana Education. I'm waiting for my screen to show. Okay, so you see some of the information here. This is a screenshot of the websites we just saw. And now, uh, just before dinner time, that's why I selected this image, I'm ready to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Milena. So if you have any questions, just type it in the box and we'll pick it up from there. I have a few questions that came like during your presentation. One of them was, can we use information from the from Europeana in our e-twinning and Erasmus projects? You're very much welcome to do so. We actually very much want to work with uh, uh, e-twinning teachers. Um, and if you create any learning activities or any learning scenarios or any project using our content, please let us know because we are more than happy to feature and promote you on our website. We want to, have to create a, a kind of a dedicated area on our website where we promote learning resources with, with European content so that, you know, it's really more teachers are aware of this free and rich resource and can use it in their classroom. So, yeah. I very much uh, look forward to such examples. <laughs> yeah, I might add, like, we really encourage e-twinners to use Europeana as well as a research, especially now that it's the year of the cultural heritage. So it would be a great opportunity for everyone to make the best out of this platform, because it's, a, as you can see, it's a really, really good resource. And you find such a, like, so much material there, so I'm sure everyone can be inspired by cultural heritage and use the material in your projects, in your classrooms, and so on. Yeah. And then another question, um, can I use educational videos from this website? Uh, if they are free to reuse, I mean, if you look at the video content itself, if it's free to reuse, so you can check the uh, uh, rights information, yes, you can use it. Um, if you um, have in mind any videos created by other uh, partners, etc. Right now, um, we don't have video tutorials, but we look forward to any video materials created by, you know, teachers uh, across Europe. Uh, yeah, just if I can go back to the uh, the previous question, um, just wanted to. Uh, remind people about the cultural heritage that eTwinning has a sp uh, special prize this year for projects about cultural heritage. So I think it would be a good opportunity to use this platform and, uh, and you create your projects for cultural heritage. And yeah, then the next question, are there some mathematical resources? Mathematical resources? Mathematical, yes. Ah, mathematical, oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, 
Not really. I mean, we might have some content which is more science related, but um, nothing which relates purely about math. I'm very sorry. Okay, yeah. And then, um, well, I have a question about the the Face app because it is available on for i on iTunes for Apple. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna do one for Android anytime soon? Uh, actually, the first version we subsidized uh, through our challenge uh, funding uh, is also available on Android. But this okay. first version uh, is, you know, using only the five portraits and the assignments. So you can download it in either Android or uh, in iOS. Uh, the second version is only available in Apple, uh, in, okay. on the Apple Store. Okay, so it's also for Android. And then yeah. there was one question, uh, is it free? But this might refer to the APIs. The APIs are free. All five of them are free. Okay. You just uh, need to register with your email uh, in your you know, uh, API key registration form. You get the key submitted to you and you can start using it immediately. Okay, and then a um, few other questions. Uh, can you show one more time how you got to the educational resources section on Europeana? Sure, I'll do that right now. Okay, so I'll start from the very beginning. So it is pro.europeana.eu. This is our service for professionals. Then you go on the left under priorities. When you click there, you find education. And when you're on the education website, you can see the quick links to everything we do with the resources. I mean, we can send this link as well, I'll see afterwards to, uh, after the presentation. Awesome. Yes, sorry, yeah. <laughs> oh, forgot to. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, forgot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, forgot to turn my microphone on. And yeah. then for the very last thing, uh, could you put your contact details again? There, there were a few questions about like uh, for the uh, for the contacts. It's visible. Sure. I mean, I'm not sure you should, but it's Milena Popova at European EU. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, any other questions? I see that people were very inspired by your presentation. So, thank oh, you for taking you your much. time to, yeah, present. We were almost uh, 250 people. Wow. In the room. <laughs> I'm very yes, excited. a lot of people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see a question about the European office. Um, European office is in The Hague, the Netherlands. Yes. Uh, just yeah. to an answer the question about the recording um, shortly, hopefully tomorrow, if not next week. And also, all the participants will get the certificate, and that I will send it out um, earliest tomorrow. Should be tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, thanks Any very other? much to everyone. I mean, I'm really happy that uh, we have so many participants and I really hope that this was useful to you. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. It was really, really interesting and I, uh, I, I hope uh, a lot of people got very uh, inspired um, by your presentation. It was very interesting. Yes, thanks very much. Yes. So, if no other questions, um,